Shalom from Jerusalem. My name is Shani Ferguson, and you may be road tripping. You may be cleaning your house for all sorts of people that may be coming. So allow me to take a moment and wish you happy holidays and a merry, merry Christmas for all of you who are celebrating it. And before I get shouted at, because it is that time of year when we get the comments about let's see um all right first of all you are jewish what are you doing wishing people a merry christmas oh my goodness people it's okay it's okay i can be happy for people to celebrate christmas i think you know what is really funny i've actually had some french jews uh who grew up in france and then immigrated to israel and they're religious and they you know obviously would only celebrate hanukkah but they're like you know we kind of really liked the feel and all the lights overseas. And so you should know that the Christmas decorations all over the world are very beautiful to see. Uh, we actually went and visited Germany a few years ago just so we could see that because in Israel, except for a few tiny locations we will discuss in a moment, they don't celebrate Christmas. So we have Hanukkah and it is the holiday of lights. It just so happens to be. So we highlight that in light of the world decorating during this season. Number two, yes, we know this was just a chosen date throughout history. We know that history. I believe it is okay to pick a date to celebrate someone's birthday when you don't know when their birthday was. Because really, you know, a lot of people would say it's too, it was too cold. There's no way it happened December. We know that we live like five minutes from Bethlehem. Okay, we know how cold it gets here in December. We know it was likely in the fall. But again, we're all just guessing. Let's pick a day. You know, there's actually people who immigrated to Israel from Ethiopia and they don't have birth certificates. So they literally just make up their birthdays. It's okay. The point is we are celebrating the birth of the Jewish Messiah. If anything, the most offensive thing you could do on Christmas is not recognize that Yeshua was born as a Jew in Israel, in the Jewish city of Bethlehem, and he came to be the savior of the world. And his birth was not only significant to the Jewish people, but ultimately to the world. The number one reason that I advocate for not boycotting Christmas is because it's literally the only holiday that I know of in the Western world where families have an excuse to get together. In Jewish culture, we have holidays throughout the year. We're celebrating all sorts of incredible things that God did through our history. On Fridays, that means once a week, it's common for Jews to come together and have meals together as a family. But in the Western world, everybody is running to and fro. Everybody is busy with their lives. Everybody's relatives and families and sisters and brothers and parents, they live all over. And there is this moment in time where everyone decides, you know what? I'm going to go see my family. I'm going to go spend time with them. It may be fun. It may be rough. But if there's anything you can advocate for the December holidays, it is that families take the time to get together. Okay? So I understand all the background and all the theological arguments. Let's just enjoy these holidays. And so when you hear a Merry Christmas from Israel, just know that's what we're saying. Let us celebrate the shift in the universe that happened when heaven and earth met, when things changed, when man, a story began to unfold in which man would be restored to relationship with God. This is a beautiful thing. The fact that along the way people chose a date or added all sorts of traditions that shouldn't cancel out the focus of what we have in front of us, God came to us and he came to the Jewish people. So let's not have this beautiful gem of a truth get lost and buried in the midst of all the other things. It's almost like we have this treasure and it's gone through the ages and been carried from generation to generation, but it got some dirt on it and some dust and people just look at it and go, ew. And why guys, this is a monumental moment in time. This is such a beautiful thing. This is God coming and being with man. This is thousands of years of God working with a people, through a people, 
to show the rest of the world who he is as a God. And we have it recorded in history. We have it recorded in the Bible, this long journey that God takes with a people group. And the reason he's doing this is because he wants the rest of the world to look and go, huh, that's the people group that belong to God. This is how God treats his people. I want in on that. This is what God, these are the miracles that God does. And you know, in Jewish culture, every single holiday we celebrate is about remembering some miraculous moment in our history. That's all these holidays are for. And some people are like, they get caught up in like, did you hang the kosher like cable on? Did the, did the matzah, like, did the dough sit there for more than 3.5 seconds? And so then it's not kosher and whatever. All those things, it's fine. Those are traditions. But the most important thing about Passover, the most important thing about Purim, and the most important thing about Hanukkah, which is seemingly celebrated in the New Testament, but not actually, we're never actually commanded to, to do it. It's not one of the feasts. But every time we have these holidays, that's what we do in the holidays. We retell the story of what happened because we are passing on the wonders of God to the next generation. So however you want to process Christmas, I get that you can see all these like things that have seemingly nothing to do with it and, and they can be upsetting or whatever. But let's stay focused on this gem that we have, which is God came to us and he said, I want to be with you so much that I'm going to come to you because you can't come to me. And then throughout history, okay, they picked a day to celebrate it. Like, what did you want them not to pick a day? Did you want it recorded? Like, do you understand how much war happened in Israel? How many Jews were exiled? The martyrs, the Jewish martyrs that took it to the nations, took this, like, this is a whole messy history. If you guys want to, you know, harp on the, what date it was or when we think it was, it doesn't matter. Somebody picked a date and that's the date everyone recognizes. So, okay, there are certain things that are whatever, pagan practices, whatever, you don't have to do them. I have never had a Christmas tree in my house. Every time I see them, like I always wonder to myself, like what gets people to bring a tree in their house? Like I'm trying to process, like I see them everywhere. I see them in hotels. There's still this kind of like thing because I didn't grow up with it and I see them and I'm like, oh, those are pretty. Like, why would people bring a tree in their house? So I get it, but it's still beautiful. And if I go to someone's house and they have a beautiful tree, it's amazing. And it's like all sparkle lights and everything. Goodness, guys, they just made their house prettier. Like, okay, so they like brown couches and I like white couches and they like trees in their house and I prefer a potted plant. But I can 100% admire the fact that they prefer the tree in their house. So The point is that traditions often unite us and it doesn't even matter what the tradition is. Did your grandma make a turkey and she cut it in half and put it in two different pans and that's what you do now? Do you have a special recipe from your family? All those things are exactly what the scripture says. Whether you eat or drink, do it for the glory of God. Whatever your family tradition is, whatever your local tradition is, whatever a global tradition is, guys, let's just find something to unite us. There's, it's literally the most popular holiday on the planet. And there's people sitting there arguing why we shouldn't do it. There's like one unifying thing that we have that people enjoy celebrating. They like having a reason to be happy. Let's be happy together. Let's, it's an excuse to be happy. We, in Hebrew, we say, it's just a reason to celebrate. It rhymes in Hebrew, but it's kind of like a play on words in Hebrew, but it's a reason to celebrate. And Jews love a reason to celebrate. So guys, Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. If you were busy enjoying donuts and adding to your waistline like we were, let me just say the French bakery downstairs. Oh my gosh. That was entirely unnecessary for me to discover that, but I did. And the bottom line is I really had a good excuse this time though, because it's important that we do traditions together. And if we're going to get them, then I need to be seen eating them with everybody else or it's just not fair. But you know, like we've got soldiers on the field in Gaza and they stopped and they took the time to light candles for Hanukkah. And you know, our soldiers out in the desert and our families at home and, you know, Jews all over the world overseas, we did that. Do you know what kind of unifying factor that is? But this is the power 
of traditions, of routines, of annual cycles that we do over and over again. You know, historically, one of the things they say about the Jewish people is that they're the only people group that was able to maintain their identity outside of a land that identified them for thousands of years. It's never happened. Every other people group assimilated, and yet the Jewish people not only maintained their identity, the moment their land was available, they went back thousands of years of maintaining this. And a lot of it has to do with this annual cycle of remembering the wonders of God. And I understand that this was, you know, God said it was going to happen. But on a practical level, what was happening was that they maintained these annual cycles, these moments throughout the year in which we remember the wonders of God and which we remember that we are a part of a long story. We are a part of a plan. We are a part of a destiny that God said would happen. And so in the same sense, I would encourage you to dive into what makes your family your family. Like what makes your team Team Johnson or Team Cohen? What makes your family unique? What defines you? I didn't say what makes your family pretty. I said, what makes your family your family? What are traditions that unite you guys and be like, oh, yeah, well, you know, that's that's the Johnson blood. I'll tell you, you know, those are the things that give joy, that give a sense of identity and that also give you a sense of responsibility. This is my family. We have a long story. Our story matters and we want our story to continue. And I want you to know something and really absorb this because a lot of people feel discouraged sometimes. And especially the holidays, sometimes when, you know, if you've lost loved ones and it's your first Christmas or first Hanukkah without them, or you're going through a difficult time right now and you're like, why, you know, it's the holidays, it should be a good time. I want you to take a minute and process that you are part of, of a line of people who survived. There are millions of family lines that did not succeed. They did not survive. They were wiped out. You exist because you came from a line of survivors, of thrivers, of people who made it through history full of wars and famines and migrations and sicknesses, your line survived and your family deserves to have their story, their unique story, continue. So find and focus on what makes your family your family. Enjoy the quirky, the crazy, the amazing, the unbelievably difficult. Enjoy having that be a part of your story. And I'll close out with this point because one of the things that makes Jews unique, I think it really irritates a lot of people, but Jews have such a sense of identity and confidence because of our God that anytime we go into a war, it's painful. We don't want to do it. We don't want to send our fathers and brothers and daughters and mothers to go fight. We know some of them will not come home. It's not something we enjoy doing, but we know we're going to win. It's never a question in our mind that we're going to win because our God has always done that. We always win. We suffer greatly. We've had huge numbers of our people wiped out. Every generation, there's someone out to get us. And every generation, we survive. That is a promise that we have from God. He said, as long as the sun is in the sky and the moon and the stars and the waves in the sea, we would be a nation before him. That is the confidence we have in him. And if you serve the same God, you have confidence in the promises he has for you. Two last notes before I close out. Number one, if you have not read the December edition of the Ma'oz Israel Report, they are usually I Stand with Israel Stories, which are just different people's lives that we were able to change 
through the help of our partners who give to I Stand With Israel. And we usually highlight their stories in December because they're nice and warm and encouraging. Right now, we're at war. And so what we did is, uh, in ever since the beginning of the war, is we kind of put aside a story here, a story there that made us smile, that gave us the encouragement that God is with us, some miracles, some wow moments, and even a couple things that made us laugh. So if you would like a little bit of that uh, kind of chicken soup for the soul type stories, you can go to maosisrael.org and check out the Maos Israel Report. It is called Worship and Worships, and that is essentially where we're at right now. There are worships on our shore, but we will never stop worshiping our God and taking moments to focus on what he is doing during this difficult time is an act of worship. The second thing is on the 28th of December, we are going to go live on Zoom with any of you who are available, would like to talk to us, ask questions, get some feedback from the country. That is going to be December 28th. It is 9.30 Jerusalem time. Okay, so if you're in Central, that's going to be 1.30 p.m. Central time in the U.S. If you're in the U.K., you're two hours behind us. So that'll be 7.30 p.m. So I would encourage you, put that in your calendar. December 28th, we love to see you. We know a lot of you are going to be on holiday, so we are going to be recording it and posting it for you to check out later. But any of you want to be live and want to be a part of the conversation by all means, join Kobe and I and some of the other Ma'oz Israel team. We can't wait to see you. Until then, I pray that your time during this holiday season that you spend with your loved ones, your family, your friends, will give you fresh memories to hold in your heart. And if this particular season is a difficult one, remember there is more to your story. Just stick around. Until next time, I'm Shinny Ferguson. Thank you for joining this episode of Israeli Insiders. Visit us at maozisrael.org. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram or write us your questions and comments at connect at maozisrael.org.